Hey there, it's Matt Craig here, and in today's video, we're talking all things B2B marketing. So how do we get more leads? How do we get more qualified leads? And most importantly, how do we persuade those leads and persuade those leads to buy from us when they're ready for a sales presentation? So I got interviewed by my good mate, Michael Natalin from Market Lead, and I went on his channel and spoke about all things conversion rate optimization in the B2B space. And we go outside the CRO side of things as well. We actually talk about offer optimization and making an offer that's too good to refuse, as well as talking about the fatal traps, as well as actionable strategies that you can deploy right now in your B2B marketing to get better results. So I'll see you on the video now. Excellent. So we are back with the third segment, and this is the one on lead generation for B2B companies. This is an area that seems to be under addressed in the market a lot, and a lot of agencies tend to work with B2B uh, companies, but fail to get the results quite consistently because whilst it is still lead generation, it's still a different user cost per clicks are higher there's less actual traffic coming through and a lot of b2b marketing is quite boring and it doesn't need to be boring because at the end of the day they're still marketing to humans so like if you're working with a b2b client you're still talking to them on a human level so you've got to address them on the human level but also advertise and do a message professionally as well so I wanted to have this chat with Matt because Matt and I have worked on heaps and heaps and heaps of B2B clients in the past. And I know Matt's doing amazing work at the moment uh, with persuasion experience. Like you're working with multi-billion dollar brands like Wayflyer and Linktree and getting amazing results for them, seeing significant upticks in the B2B aspects, in the conversion rates, in the funnels, in everything. And, you know, and that's probably underselling what you know and what it does. So that's why we're having this conversation. But I know that just from my own personal experience, like sometimes when I pick up B2B Google Ads accounts or Facebook accounts, I'm always a bit like hesitant because I'm like, oh, like it is, it's more difficult. It really is. And no one's really addressing the conversion side. Yes, you can talk about the keywords and the ads and what you can do there and narrow it down. But once you get that click, which you might be able to get, what do you do next? So that's why I want to have this conversation with you, Matt. Um, maybe we start off with like a bit of your experience with the brands you've worked with in the B2B area. Then we'll jump into the biggest mistakes and then some of the most quick practical things a B2B company can implement for their website, landing page and sales funnel. So we'll start off with just like your experience in the B2B space. Like Mike's yeah. over to you, mate. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, well, like with persuasion experience, both myself and my co-founder, Alicia, we've built out over 450 plus marketing funnels in 120 plus industries now. So you can essentially drop us off into any industry and we can come in within the first week and just be like, we'll do a full diagnostic of your marketing funnel as well as your sales process as well. Because at the moment, we're just talking about like, oh, you know, like getting more conversions, getting more leads coming through. Um, lead quality as well as also like that sales process and that sales enablement is just so, so important because we with the B2B space, there's just so much consideration that's going through people's mind, right? And it's also super, super competitive. So, um, you know, in our time, we've worked with, you know, billion dollar brands like Linktree and Wayfly, like you mentioned earlier, and, you know, we've been building out their landing pages and also helping them to unlock new channels, right? A lot of these brands, they've built up dependencies on, say, Google Ads, um, and they want to crack Facebook advertising as an example, right? And they're wanting to like scale because a lot of these B2B brands that we work with, especially like in the software space, they've got like, tough marketing goals to reach out to, right? Like they've got these investors expect, expecting and demanding certain results from their marketing, from their sales. So it's extremely like cutthroat and we need to be putting out really, really strong offers. So what we do at Persuasion Experience is essentially just try to design and understand the user as well. Um, one of the things is like in the B2B, there's a lot about, you know, features and like technologically, this is what we can do. And everyone's focused on the technology. We take a step back and we just focus on the psychology, right? Why would someone even want this in the first place? So that's a bit about sort of like, I guess our experience and I guess like, yeah, back to you, like where do you want to deviate from here? Yeah, well, let's go to the biggest mistakes because you've got a lot of clients, like you've worked with heaps in the past, the B2B, and you've seen campaigns go amazing and then some just like failing immediately. And even with clients at the moment, like, either when you're before you pick them up and start working with them or even when you're running them like what are the biggest mistakes you see in b2b lead generation i see the biggest mistake actually at the ad level and their ads are just so poor they look like ads 
And the best example is like um, ClickUp. So I love ClickUp. I use ClickUp personally within my own um, agency and and business. Um, but they had like an ad ages ago and it's like, hey, we've just secured $500 million in funding. And we're like, that, that was like the ad. And they were expecting to like generate clients from this. Now, maybe it's like for social proof and authority, but what a lot of people are doing, they're looking up to click up as like this, you know, this billion dollar unicorn brand. Oh, that's the advertising that they're doing. They've got like all these fancy graphics and things like that. And it just reeks of advertising and someone trying to sell me something. And what you really want to do is just have like essentially native ads that are going to be calling out to people, right? Like you don't want it to even look like an ad. And I think that's where most people get it wrong with B2B. They're like, I'm a brand, so we need to have branded ads. And if you're gonna have branded ads on Facebook, you're gonna get crushed. You need to have more native ads and they need to be burning with curiosity and you're naturally going to get more attention. And you know, we've worked with brands that have just had like an iron fist with that. And they're like, nope, the brand is the brand. We need to run ads like this. And you know, they have, um, millions and millions of dollars of investment. So they can afford wastage. Whereas a lot of B2B brands, they look up to these other brands like, oh, we should advertise like that, but you can't afford to, the wastage, right? Like you can't afford to have, you know, a conversion rate or like a click-through rate of like half a percent. You need a click-through rate of like 1% or 2% on your ads. And that's probably like the biggest mistake is it like at the actual ad level, um, not meeting your customer where you're at. Because what you said earlier, Michael, around like, you know, it's B2B, but at the end of the day, it's just B2P, right? Business to person. And just communicating yeah. with that person. H to H, human account. to human. No, that's really valuable. And I like that's what I see because the ad side can be difficult. Like even, you know, audiences on Facebook or keywords on Google, they people think they just need to crack that. They're like, then they just bypass what the ad is, where like, you know, like, yeah, you do get the right person or you do have the right uh, keyword and someone like searches it. But if your ad isn't connecting, then you're missing out on that potential high intent prospect who's yeah, there yeah. in that moment. Like don't even worry about the landing page of the website. Like if you can't even get that person through and you do need something that, you know, we were talking about in the last video, like serves them and gives them that, you know, that guarantee, not the guarantee, but the peace of mind that what you're offering and doing will make their life better and easier and make them look like a rock star. And at the end of the day with a B2B service, you're either talking to a business owner, essentially marketing to a business owner who is essentially going, is this going to destroy my business or make it better? It could be going to a marketing manager or an operations manager who's going to go, am I going to look like a rock star or am I going to get fired over this? So there's more mm. like, it seems like there's more doom and gloom, but also like higher upside. And I can understand now why the ad is really beneficial because that's the first thing someone will actually see from your business. It's the entry point. Yeah, yeah, they might be proactively doing something, but then are they, once they see the ad, they're going, is this going to make me a rock star or am I going to lose everything? Yeah, so that's no one really wants to look, look like a fool. <laughs> no one, mate. No one does, and we we know that for sure. Yeah, and it's like I think that's a great like concept, right? Like, is this going to make me look like a rock star? Like, I I don't want to look like a fool. Like, I, I, this needs to work out for me. If I if I mess this up, this you know this could be my job, right? Like, if you're going out to marketing managers and getting them signed up, you need them to be the champion of the brand, right? Yeah, definitely, man. Beautiful. So, like, after the ads, like, what are the other things you're seeing in the B two B lead generation space? Like. Just mistakes. Yeah, I know we spoke about on our previous video on B2C around just like vanilla offers. Um, and we see it all the time, like speak to sales is a call to action. Like no one wakes up and is excited to speak with sales, right? Hey, do you want to jump on a quick 60 minute call to get hard closed by our best, most savage sales rep that isn't going to make commissions this month? No one wants to do that, right? But they do want to receive value, right? So one of the things is just like flipping the script and really just thinking about it is that, that H to H, right? Human to human. What does that other human on the other line, what would really motivate them long to making a buying decision? What do they need, right? Do they need a bit of a roadmap? Do they need, do they need a product demo? Do they need an express demo? And really starting to think about that offering and really that is the biggest mistake because we just see people they don't have their offering down pat and then it's just really unclear of like what what they're even jumping on a call for in the first place hey guys hope you're enjoying the video today guys if you are make sure you like and subscribe so you never miss a video and update from me and also head over to mattsfreebook.com i've just completed my new book called black box persuasion seven advanced persuasion triggers to get more marketing response for your business and from your marketing. So check it out at mattsfreebook.com. Enjoy the video. Yeah, that's really important. When I think about just mm. like my clients that are superstar clients to me, but I'm also a superstar advertiser for them. It's like, it's the trust and relationship. And like, you can't 
make that a lead or an offer, but like that's essentially what you're trying to get on those calls. Like people don't want to go on a call and feel like they're being sold. They want to get on a call and go, am I going to create a relationship with this person? Am I going to trust them? Because a lot of B2B stuff isn't a one-off experience. A lot of it is like an ongoing thing. It's a relationship. And a lot of people just feel like if that first touch point is just being sold, then like the relationship isn't really being formed. So it's yeah. really, yeah. Like I really like what you said last video and this one is just really about like no one's excited to go, oh, sweet, I'm going to be sold today on this one hour call and I'm going to be like feeling uncomfortable. Like people want to know that they're receiving value and by receiving value, ultimately they become a client or a customer or whatever is meant to be. So that's really good. And then in terms of like an offer for like B2B, like how would you navigate it? Because a lot of times offer creation has to be quite creative mm. and uh, a lot of B2B stuff has to be a bit cut and dry at times, but that's not necessarily the truth. So is it just that we'll, we can talk about the practical things after this, but would you just say like with most offers for B2B is just like they're not good enough, they're not creative, they're not on the human to human level, it's more just like robotic? Yeah, I would say that the the most the biggest issue with the B2B is it's also just not exciting, right? Like just because it's business to business doesn't mean it has to be boring. <laughs> Like it needs to be exciting, right? Um, obviously, being in the marketing space, it's much easier to make it exciting, right? Talk about, you know, like the new systems and technology, but there's no reason why you can't actually deploy it in a, like in a B2B practice. Like I'm just trying to think of like a really boring um, <laughs> industry where we could like map something out that would be more exciting. But the thing to think about is just like, people always just want to improve their lives, right? They want more simple, simpleness in there. They want more ease. They want more a more friction-free life. So a lot of B2B is about taking and solving other people's problems. So it's just thinking about, okay, what's my prospect's biggest friction point? And like, what's the biggest roadblock? What's the biggest thing that makes them just like fed up with their day and that we solve for them? And really starting to design a plan of like, hey, we'll show you how we can remove this in as little as 14 to 30 days. Um, just jump on a quick 15-minute info session. We'll walk you through our process for doing so. It's like, oh, that. Yeah. That sounds awesome. And that's just making it more exciting because we're removing that friction from their life. So they're just like, oh, finally, I don't have to worry about this problem anymore. Yeah, that's amazing. So we've gone over the ads, the first mistake you usually see, then secondly, the offer. What about like websites or landing pages? What do you tend to see there? Is it much the same as the ads in the offer that it's boring, uninspiring? Like, are there any other things on B2B websites or landing pages you tend to see are pretty bad? Yeah, again, it comes down to that excitement factor and headlines, right? Just because you're in B2B doesn't mean it needs to be boring, right? Like people hate to be sold, but they love to buy. So you just need to make your B2B service like awesome to buy from. Like you want to be exciting, right? If you can use humor in your advertising, do it. If, if, if you're more serious, like just to start to think about like, you know, how can we make this an enjoyable experience? Like Michael, like, you know, um, I think your nickname's like Smiley Mike when you, you know, jump on sales calls and things like that. Look at it, there he is, Smiley Mike. <laughs> um, but you know, you add like a very like human touch to it and you need to ask like, you know, why, why you at the end of the day, like what makes you unique and really use that to your advantage. And like a lot of people, again, it just comes down to that B2B B2B equals boring. No, it doesn't. And if you are going to be boring, you're actually going to be losing. If, you know, and we talked about in um, some of the other videos that we've done is creating that golden hippo offer, right? Instead of all this boring gray competitors out there, be that golden hippo, be that shining light for your customer. And if you can get your offer and your messaging to announce that and like um, spread it to the world, naturally you're going to attract that target market that you desire. Yeah. And I feel like kind of the the barrier to like improvement is so low because most of the time when you're working with B2B companies, like it's someone just doing their job, they're burnt out, they're stressed. And if you just bring a bit more joy, excitement in terms of your email, your marketing, or just your conversation, it like makes their like day or week significantly better. So if you can reverse engineer that into your ad creative, your copy, anything, you're already just like getting that one up because most things are just like, boring yeah. we're the best this we do this and it's like nah I, I i want you to know that you're making my life better and easier and that also comes from just like you being a good person towards me like in terms of just like i enjoy having this business relationship it's just not like oh i've got another meeting with our supplier this week yeah totally um like I grew up in the world of um, like debt collection, like ANZ Bank. That was like my first job. So I was very corporate man and very, very like 
wooden when I, and like it's still something that's probably in me today, but um, in terms of like our marketing experience, when we have clients come through or if we even have like a lead call come through when they book through in our Calendly link, we have like a little fire emoji. So a little fire emoji pulls them into their calendar and they're like, oh wait, I've got that 3 p.m. marketing meeting with persuasion experience. I can't wait for that. And it just totally flips the script, right? And it's like, we sell B2B, but it's not boring. Yeah, you see my emails with clients that we work with and it's just like emoji central, but it's like... 20 rainbow emojis. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like ticks. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, but the reason I do that is because it, it one, it just cuts through too. It actually just like, it makes it a bit fun and it shows like, I'm yeah. serious about working with you and getting results, but like, I'm not taking things too seriously. Like, this is still like life at the end of the day. We, mm. can, we can enjoy ourselves. What a concept. Uh, Gamer, gamify the experience. Yeah. 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 And that's what happens with a lot of businesses. Like you've got these long projects that seem just to be like drawn out, like turn into a game, hit milestones, turn, make things special. Yeah. Um, and just, just on that as well, like um, a, a lot of the marketing campaigns, like the private and like cons- consultative campaigns we build out for clients, they can sometimes take six, eight, maybe even 12 weeks, depending on the size of them. They're like, they can be really massive. Like you've seen the extent and the level of detail that we go to from doing the research, doing the strategy, to doing the copy, to doing the conversion optimized design and like all the build and the QA and then the testing and then the reporting on everything. Like it's very, very extensive. And we realize that. So with our offer, we actually have all these bonuses when someone actually even signs up with us called quick win bonuses. Hey, this is what you're going to get from us within the first two weeks because we know it's going to take them probably two months to three months to actually see the result of like the fruits of our labor. So if we can deliver them a quick win earlier on, it's going to be more exciting for them to sign up. So that's what you need to think about with B2B as well. Um, Whenever I think about B2B, I think about like signing up for HubSpot or something like that. And like, it's just like, there's always all this sort of friction and things like that in there. But you know, if HubSpot could come out and say, hey, we'll automatically migrate you across, you'll be up and running in seven days, or you should see an increase in your close and conversion rates or like your leads opting in by 20% in, in two weeks time, right? Like their conversion rate would just be through the roof. So it's just about being innovative and yeah, creative around that offer creation. Yeah. And especially that like customer experience post sale, like, yeah, like that's a big thing in B2B as well. It's like you need to get a quick win so people don't have buyer's remorse because as soon as they start, they've paid you or like you've started, buyer's remorse just like keeps going up. So you need to get that first win, especially in B2B if you've got like long-term projects, like get a win in early so people that buyer's remorse yeah. drops down. And like, you know, that's like we're talking about B2B lead generation, but like, you know, this is part of lead generation because then if you want to be getting more leads from referrals, they can at least be like, yeah, like, you know, they're the best supplier. You, they got us a result within one week and the project was supposed to take 12 weeks or 12 months. So that's a really important part because people do overlook the uh, the post-sale experience, which can also start feeding in either future work from that client or also just referrals. Yeah, and how, and how sticky the product is, you know. Um, even even little things like um, it's from like direct response world, right? So this is something that was used in like the 70s and 80s, but it's like sending out a stick letter. It might be like a letter that you sign off on um, and it might have a gift in it, but sending that out to a client, it's like that's going to leave a lasting impression. And then if you can mix it with something like a talk trigger um, being like, you know, like a tangible gift. Um, we were at a marketing conference in Bali um, a little while ago, about six weeks ago, and we were talking about like those little gifts in the mail. If you send that out and like it's got some meaning behind it, you're sending it out to this person. Again, that's just, separating you from the competition becoming a golden hippo in your marketplace i do that with life in life i never buy vouchers i always buy personalized gifts because it's like and especially stuff that people have to have for long terms every time they wear it or have it they think of me but also like you know with like messages i send to clients sometimes i like handwrite a message like in a card because i'm like they're not going to throw this out they're always going to remember me so like that personalized (laughs) touch makes a big difference so not wanting to take up too much more of your time, let's jump into the the practical things, like the top three things that a B two B like business could implement this week uh, to assist their lead generation. Like practical things, we've talked about the biggest mistakes, but and you can even go back to those things and have a practical aspect. But what are the top things that, because of the biggest mistakes you see, are the top things business could could implement um, yeah. in the B two B area? The top thing we see as well in B2B, there's a lot of wastage, right? So there's a lot of lost leads for whatever reason, lost it to a competitor, someone went cold or something like that. So they've actually got this massive, they're just sitting on like this massive like mountain of gold of like, this unactivated list. So we see great benefit in actually reactivating a list if they've been um, 
on like sitting on a list as like say like a lost deal for 180 days get everyone in that list and send them like a re-engagement campaign two to three emails and it's actually like a checkup and it's like a health check because it's like hey you know um you know for whatever reason we haven't gone ahead we just wanted to check in and see if you're getting the result that you wanted and it might be you know result is getting more clients coming through or whatever that b2b service is um, and just like a quick check-in like hey if you need any assistance let us know we're here for you and then just like signing off on that and like first of all it leaves a positive impression of your brand on that lost lead and then second of all they're like yeah look you know we're still not getting the results would be good to sign up again so you're going to get instant leads coming through um so that would be one of the first things is just actually thinking about like the wastage that you've experienced previously right like you've spent tens maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars on all this lead generation you really just want to make the most of very lead that comes through your door. So we see a lot of wastage there. So that would be one of the first things Um, from say like a more say like conversion rate optimization perspective. Just trying to think about it now in terms of what would be the best element to test with. Well, it all all sort of depends, but I would say from like a tactical, hey, if you had four hours of marketing time and you needed to get something live, it would be a headline test. So go have a chat with your current media buyer and have a, uh, ask him, hey, what is the highest click-through rate ad? What is the headline of that ad? And then write a new headline for your landing page or your website, wherever you're sending the traffic and update that. We call this like an AB um, ad congruency test. And every time we run it, it literally just always wins for us. Um, and that would be the first the first thing that I would look at doing just from like a practical standpoint. Um, obviously with that conversion rate optimization, you know, um, it can be quite an in-depth process. So it's hard to sometimes recommend just like certain things, but that is something that I'm certain on. If you get the like highest click-through rate ad and the highest converting rate ad, create a simple little A-B test or even just update it, you're going to get better marketing response and more leads flowing through for your brand. Excellent. And one more, one more juicy, amazing, practical idea that a B2B business owner or a marketing manager could implement today. Yeah, I think um, adding personality into the copy um, and then personality can be like the way you write, but it can also be about adding video and making it more human, H to H, as we said earlier, human to human, but actually having someone, hey, hey, you know, um, you know, we're Michael from Market Lead and this is what we can do for you today. And maybe it's just a short two minute video, but you're like, hey, I like this guy's vibe. And adding that to your page can do wonders to your conversion rate. That's amazing, mate. I, I know, yeah. and I know we could keep going so much deeper. And this is an area that and, sorry, just to like that, it doesn't need to be something professionally produced as well. It can just be I don't have my phone on me at the moment, but it can be a simple selfie video as well, right? Like the iPhones take amazing quality, so don't think about having to get like a twenty thousand dollar production team and got flying drones through the office. It could be really like even the raw the better, I believe, because it's going to be like oh no, this is H to H, as we said earlier. I think I think we've developed a new form of marketing on this uh, this. This one no, interview, it's, but you know, it's good. It's man. important. Yeah, definitely. And I know we've been talking about. I'm going to put you on the um, the the boiler for this, but like you, with your business tra- um, transitioning to its next stage, you're looking to create a a product or system really around the the B two B space because that is significantly underserved. So um, anyone who's further interested in this, like, stay up to date with Matt's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, LinkedIn, also mattsfreebook.com, which you'll speak about in a second, and persuasion experience because I'm putting the pressure on because I know I'm interested that this is an area that's underutilized. So if you're wanting to know more, follow Matt's stuff because a lot of it's stuff like a lot of his clients uh, are, are B2B at the moment. So naturally, the content you'll be putting out will be aligned with that. Like a lot of people, when they talk about marketing, online it's everyone talking about e-commerce because they're running a drop ship business but it's like okay that's not good or when people talk about lead gen it's like lead gen b2c which is yeah that's like relevant but it's not as like this is a different game like just because it's lead generation doesn't mean it's the same lead generation so i want to acknowledge like thank you for what you're sharing it's a bit more in depth and there will be more things that you're releasing so uh matt you have your new ebook coming out next week, which I'll put the link below. The website will be mattsfreebook.com and the ebook will be called The The Black Box Persuasion Book. So it's um yeah, seven advanced triggers for persuasion and just becoming more persuasive online, right? And like if I was to ask you and your audience today, what would happen in your life if you were 25% more persuasive? And that's what this free ebook is entails to do, right? Like just making everything 25% more persuasive, your ads, your emails, your landing pages stacking all those together to just create an awesome marketing machine that, you know, funds your life. Legend. Thank you so much for your time today, mate. And thanks for the uh, 
information over the last three awesome videos, including this one. And I'm sure we'll be doing more in the future, but I'll sign off now. Thank you. And we'll chat soon. Thanks for having me on, mate.